First up tonight, the breaking news. Donald Trump scores two desperately needed wins in court. His Georgia trial now indefinitely on pause as the judge overseeing his classified documents case in Florida puts off key decisions and agrees to hold a highly unusual hearing on special counsel Jack Smith's appointment. CNN's Caitlin Polance and CNN's Zachary Cohn are working both of these stories from every angle. First to you, Zachary. Does this ensure that the Fulton County, Georgia case will not happen before the election in November? Yeah, well, today's order makes it official that there is effectively zero chance that Donald Trump stands trial in Georgia before the 2024 election. And look, the chances of that happening were already slim, but now this order today from the Georgia Court of Appeals puts all work in the trial court overseen by Judge Scott McAfee on hold until this issue of whether or not Fawny Willis should be disqualified is resolved by the appeals court. And we do expect that a decision on that won't be made until potentially March 2025. That's when potentially work could pick back up if Fawny Willis is allowed to remain on this case. Now, the DA's office in Georgia, in Fulton County, can appeal this decision um, by the appeals court, but the fact that they went and explicitly issued this order today when Judge Scott McAfee had allowed work to continue already pretty much makes the chances of, of them accepting an appeal from Fonnie Willis very unlikely. And what this does is it underscores how Donald Trump has really been successful recently in putting prosecutors on their back heels, and he did so in Georgia by really raising issues about Fonnie Willis's personal life. Remember that this whole disqualification issue rose out of allegations that she and her lead prosecutor, Nathan Wade, had an improper romantic relationship and that she benefited financially from that relationship. Scott McAfee said that there was not enough evidence to show a actual conflict of interest, but did really criticize Fonnie Willis in his order to allowing um, Donald Trump and some of his co-defendants to appeal the decision, saying that there was the appearance of a conflict. So now the appeals court in Georgia will take this issue up. And I want to read what um, Trump's lead attorney in the Georgia case, Steve Sadow, wrote in reaction to today's order. He said, quote, the Georgia Court of Appeals has properly stayed all proceedings against President Trump in the trial court pending its decision on our interlocutory appeal, which argues the case should be dismissed and Fulton County DA Fawny Willis should be disqualified for her misconduct. Now, the DA's office is not commenting on the order at this time, but we'll have to see how this does ultimately affect the future of the case. Zachary Cohn, thank you very much. I want to get to new developments right now. In another Trump case, the judge overseeing the former president's classified documents trial is once again pushing off key decisions as she reshuffles the court schedule. Let's get details from our senior crime and justice reporter, Caitlin Polans. Caitlin, what's behind these changes? Well, Judge Eileen Cannon, she is reconfiguring that schedule for the late June hearings that she had set. She was going to have four days of hearings. Now she's going to have three, and they're going to be different than what she wanted to do before. Part of this is because there's a lot to do, and Judge Cannon seems very wanting to have everything argued in person before her in that courtroom in Fort Pierce, Florida. Well, if that doesn't happen in every case, a lot of judges just make decisions based on legal arguments on the papers, but not Judge Cannon. Uh, what she's going to be doing at that three-day hearing stretching at the end of June, she's going to be hearing about a gag order that prosecutors want to place on Donald Trump, limiting his ability to speak about law enforcement while he awaits trial. She's also going to be hearing an, a day and a half of arguments around the constitutionality of the special counsel's office, the office of the Justice Department that is prosecuting Donald Trump in this case. Other judges across the country have looked at those sorts of challenges in other special counsel criminal cases, and they've waved them away very quickly. Again, not Judge Cannon. She wants to have a day and a half hearing, and she also wants to hear from third parties another really unusual thing. There is just so much to work through, not just with that. As Zach Cohen was just noting about Georgia, no trial date on the schedule there, and there is also not a trial date at this time on the calendar, and it is looking every week more and more unlikely, even impossible, for the Florida classified documents case against Donald Trump to go to trial in any months soon, definitely not before the election, uh, because there is just so much that Judge Cannon still has to do. Yeah, lots of legal wins for the Trump legal defense team right now. Caitlin Polans, thank you very much. Our legal and political experts are joining me now with some analysis. And Michael Moore, let's talk to you first. Trump's case in Georgia now effectively frozen. Uh, as you know, uh, how significant is this? Yeah, well, I'm glad to be with all of you. It's significant, but I will say that I don't think it is um, completely unexpected. 
I mean, frankly, the Court of Appeals looked at several things and they could have been thinking, well, you know, we've got an issue challenging her qualification to stay on, so we've got to decide that so there's no more damage done to the case. This could also be the result of the cross appeal that the DA filed, where she appealed the judge's ruling where he had dismissed certain counts of the indictment. The Court of Appeals may very well be thinking, look, you know, let's know what the, the actual trial is going to look like uh, so that, you know, if we decide that that needs to be addressed and, you know, we don't waste time in the trial court having motions that end up being irrelevant uh, if some of these counts don't remain. The other thing is this is sort of following Georgia Supreme Court precedent. There's a case out of the Supreme Court that essentially talks about staying these cases when the, there are challenges to the counsel, the qualifications of counsel, the choice of counsel. So this is not the first time. It's not that unusual. But I do think it, it makes it very clear. And, I, you know, it's sort of like waiting around me thinking that the captain of the cheerleaders asked me to, to your prom. Somebody just, a friend needs to tell you, this is not going to happen. Well, let me just say, this case is not going to happen before the election. And I think at this point, we just sort of accept that, but also not read a lot into the order from the court because it is not the first time. And this is this is typically how you would expect an appeals court to, to handle a case. That is to stay the case so that no harm comes to it. There are no more complications as a result of things moving forward that might have to be redone should they decide that, in fact, there was some impropriety or that the court order should have been reversed and that the DA should have been disqualified. Yeah, Michael Moore, he knows the law in Georgia well. Uh, Kristen Holmes, let me bring you into this conversation. I know you're in Phoenix where Trump is heading tomorrow to campaign. Just how big of a win is this for Trump? What are you hearing from his team about this? Well, I've heard from one senior advisor who said they were, quote unquote, celebrating. Another said they were thrilled. As Michael just stated, this wasn't that much of a surprise even to Trump's team. They had long believed that this case was not going to happen or go to trial before that November election. But this really solidified that. Now, remember, part of their tactics have been delay, delay, delay. They have tried to do that with all four of the cases that he was indicted on, obviously unsuccessfully in New York. But now with that Georgia case being pushed, they are all also believing that that Florida case, as Caitlin said, will also be pushed beyond the election. The only one that could potentially happen before the November election now is that January 6th case in D.C. Now, they are hopeful, they are optimistic that given the Supreme Court timing and their announcement on whether or not he has presidential immunity, that that will be late enough to push that again beyond the election. And just a reminder here, part of the reason for those delay tactics are if he is tried or if that trial is supposed to happen after he is elected, and of course, all of these are only wins if Donald Trump becomes the president, it would be hard to put a sitting president on trial in Georgia. We also know that federally, he could essentially get rid of those cases. So that's why they had those, put those tactics in place in the first place. Important. Uh, Elisa Adamson is with us as well, former federal prosecutor. Elise, you think Fannie Willis will ultimately get disqualified from this case? Yeah, look, I don't think she will. I think it's important to note that the Court of Appeals is going to be bound by the trial level record. And remember, Judge McAfee did a very good job allowing the defense to develop a very strong record. And ultimately, the defense failed to meet their burden to demonstrate that D.A. Willis was either had a conflict of interest or had benefited from the appointment of Nathan Wade. So ultimately, I think in evaluating that, that transcript, the Court of Appeals will come to the same conclusion. I don't think there were any errors in Judge McAfee's ruling. That said, I also think it's important to note that this is a huge blow to Fonnie Willis. Very early on, this seemed like the strongest case. They got some very early pleas, Kenneth Chesborough, Sidney Powell, to name two, and this case had a lot of momentum, and now it has been stopped in its tracks. So disqualified, no. No, off the track, yes. And that's an important point as well. Uh, you know, Jim Trusty, you're a former Trump lawyer. Uh, let's talk a little bit about these two wins. These are major legal wins. How big of a win uh, is this for Trump? Well, I, I don't think either is all that shocking. You know, we, I keep hearing people talking about delay tactics, delay tactics. Really, the, re, the, the reaction I have is the, uh, the, uh, the ability of Jack Smith or Fonnie Willis or anybody else to accelerate these cases on an artificial schedule that's dictated by election is being denied. I think Fannie Willis is in trouble. Most of the time in a conflict case, you don't say pick one and the conflict is solved. You have both people that were a party to the conflict 
removed. Now, I think the judge on the lower court made some very genteel findings, and those factual findings get a lot of respect on appeal. So it's a, it is a crapshoot in terms of what happens on appeal, but I think there's a chance she gets recused, and then there's Georgia case law that says the office is recused. That effectively kills that case. Yeah, well, that was, let's see if that happens. Uh, Michael Moore, on the classified documents case uh, in Florida, does Judge Cannon's handling of this case raise any questions for you? She has delayed some rulings that I think could have been fairly simple. And I think you would have seen judges maybe who had had a little more experience on the bench rule more quickly or rule from the, the pleadings. At the same time, you know, I never uh, reject a chance to get in front of a judge for a hearing. And so she's given the parties a chance to come in and argue the cases, argue their points. Uh, and I think, frankly, that's a good thing. I, I, I also think this is not a, a, an ordinary case. And we want to say this being treated the same. The, the, the reality, this is not the same thing. Uh, this is a former president and these kind of charges are out here. So the fact that she's having an evidentiary hearing, she's allowing significant time for arguments, I think that's good. I do think some of the delay, I don't think there's anything necessarily nefarious about it. I don't think she's holding back to do anybody any favors. I think it's just a complicated issue and she's got some uh, uh, some some learning on the bench maybe to do as she goes on. But, uh, you know, even the 11th Circuit have said, you know, they're not going to disqualify her off of the case. And yeah. so, um, you know, I... I think having the hearings is probably a good thing. It does drag it out and make it seem very unlikely that that case moves forward before the election, too. And as we've reported many times, Trump's team wanted to delay, delay, delay. They're getting these delays, uh, very important decisions so far today. Uh, everyone, thank you very much.